Europe, welcome. This is a new feature on our channel, Virtual Eurovision Way. In each video we'll be talking about a country's participation in the Virtual Eurovision Song Contest, their successes or failures. And, of course, we want to start with last year's winner, Australia. We're about to start. Australia is the most unusual country in the Eurovision Song Contest, as the country isn't in Europe, not even in the Northern Hemisphere, and is currently the only country in the contest without full membership of the European Broadcasting Union. But despite all this, the country performs very well, and together with Ukraine, they were the only virtual Eurovision country to reach the final of all the competitions. But this year for SHO failed to reach the final and Australia are now the sole holders of this significant title, but can they beat Ukraine's record of making it to the final 15 times in a row? You might wonder, quite rightly, how Australia got to the Eurovision Song Contest in the first in general. And that's a good question indeed. The fact is that Special Broadcasting Service of Australia has been broadcasting the Eurovision Song Contest since 1983. The number of viewers gradually grew and so did the love of the contest in the country. This led to Australian votes for the contest from 2010, which were ignored by the European Broadcasting Union, but people continued to send text messages nonetheless. Australian commentators were then provided with a booth to work in the contest arena, and from 2013 Australia began appearing directly during the broadcast. At the Marmay Tilda Pilcrow competition, the video Hello from Australia was shown during the interval acts, and the following year Jessica Morboy came on stage and sang Sea of Flags, although it was not a competition entry but only a song during the interval act. And then in 2015, the moment came when Australia officially debuted at the competition. Guy Sebastian performed his song Tonight Again. At the 60th anniversary Eurovision Song Contest, the performer managed a total of 5th place with 196 points in the final, and as a special guest, Australia qualified for the semi-finals on par with the Big Five countries and hosts Austria. Australia's participation was originally intended as a one-off, but the country's successful performance spurred the European Broadcasting Union to bring Australia back in 2016. In 2016, Australia was represented by singer Dami Im with the song Sound of Silence. She won the first semi-final as well as the jury vote. But after the audience vote was announced, she lost first place to Jamala from Ukraine. Australia's next two participation in the competition were not the most clear-cut. On the one hand, the country made it to the final, but on the other hand it received only two points from the audience in 2017. And slightly more in 2018-9. In 2019, Special Broadcasting Service announced that Australia's next entry in Eurovision would be chosen through a national selection process called Eurovision, Australia Decides. As a result of the audience and professional jury vote, Kate Millerhide went to Tel Aviv with her song Zero Gravity. In Israel the singer came in first place in her semi-final and in the grand final in ninth place with 261 points. The following year the national selection was held in Australia again and Montaigne went to the competition with Don't Break Me. In Rotterdam, she made it to the finals in Rotterdam and placed 11th. Oh, no, no, no. 
the following year was, so far, the most important year in Australia's Eurovision history. The country was represented by global superstar Sia. Her song Floating Through Space won the first semi-final and then the grand final. It was the first victory for Australia. Now we're flying across space to Australia.